All right, welcome back for part two. And if you haven't already seen part one, I will put a link in the description for that. Go watch that first and get caught up on what we've already gotten done before now. And yeah, I think that's all that needs to be said before we get back to work. That's our old rusty strut mount there. Not much left of that. Man, that is crazy. Now, the part that I think is going to be just as hard is getting the other part of this out of the strut because that bolt is definitely going to be on there good and, good and tight. That'll do it. All right, well, we got that side replaced. Now that I've got the bed off and I can actually see in here a little bit better, I'm thinking I may want to go ahead and buy the mount for the other side too, because this is, it's, it's, not, it's not broken, but it's definitely getting a little thin. It's, it's pretty rusty like the other. I think the reason that they're, they're wearing out is because they're kind of cup shaped and I think they might hold like dirt and salt from the road and stuff like that in there and that may be why those are getting rusted out a little faster than other things um i don't know but i'm thinking i may want to just go ahead and buy one for that and get that one replaced as well now i was picking at the uh the front tank a little bit there and as i was scraping some rust off i actually poked a hole through the tank so that gave me the uh, the answer i was looking for of whether that thing was still good or not so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and hopefully try and get that thing dropped off from here this afternoon. That way I can get a better look at it. And I know that I think there's two different size tanks that you can have for the front tank. Uh, it's like a 16 gallon and a 19 gallon. I'm assuming this is probably the 19 because this is a full length 8 foot bed on here. And so it makes sense that it would have the bigger tank on there, but I'm not entirely sure but either way it's got to come out of there at some point so uh, i think i'm just going to go ahead and drop that out and then i don't think i mentioned this earlier but another reason to go ahead and pull the tank is that because of where the frame is cracked it is right beside this front fuel tank and in addition to that we've got and it's probably a little hard to see but there's fuel lines that are running right down through there as well so all that stuff is going to have to get kind of moved out of the way before I can start welding and grinding and cutting and stuff on this frame right here. That way, you know, just as a slight safety precaution, it'd probably be good to not have that stuff right up against stuff that uh, right up against metal that is going to be getting very, very hot. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
All right, well, hopefully that'll hold all that stuff up out of the way for the time being. And, uh, yeah, I think that should be all right. I'm not sure if that's going to work or not. Uh, we might have a problem here. So I'm thinking I may have just messed up because these fuel lines are connected together. There's a little Y connection here. So I'm, I'm thinking what's going to happen is if I turn the truck on, that fuel pump's going to start pushing fuel through and it's going to push out through uh, through these lines here and it's not going to be making it up to the truck. So I need to figure out some way to uh, somehow block this front tank line here so that I can drive out of here unless I want to put the I don't want to put that front tank back in there but I may not have a choice all right well I'm very quickly losing light here but I got the fuel pump out of the front tank there and got it reconnected into here and then tied that off to the frame it's definitely not the best setup and what I'll probably have to do is just get some fittings to where I can get rid of the Y connection in there where it would split to the two different tanks and for the time being just see if I can find some sort of a, uh, a, a coupling to just get rid of the front uh, lines there uh, that way I can get that fuel front fuel pump out of there so it's not just dangling off from the uh, the frame and and just pull all that out of there for the time being until I can get a new tank and anything that I'll need for getting that installed. Alright, so the plan for today is to get the bed fully reattached to the truck frame. So when I left last night, uh, I did kind of the same thing where I just put in two bolts uh, just to kind of hold everything in place temporarily because uh, I knew I needed to do a little bit of work to get everything back in place the way it was supposed to be. Now you've already seen I was cutting out a few little pieces of plate and the idea with that is that uh, one of there it is. One of our center bolts, which is one of the ones that we had to cut, I've got replacement bolts for those. And the metal on the bed around where the bolt goes in is getting a little rusty. So I cut out a plate for that that has a square hole in it that fits the carriage bolt head in there. So that way when that goes through, I can tighten up the nut and the bolt isn't going to turn. Now the ones that were all the way in the, I guess, the front of the bed those are a little bit different in that they have sort of a uh, uh, if you took a circle and then like cut off two of the sides parallel sides to it that's the shape that this upper part is on here so that was a little bit tricky getting a hole cut in this plate for that but I made two of these so both of our front uh, bed bolts have a little plate and then I'm just going to take these and try welding them to the bed and that way I'll be able to just drop the, uh, well this one's stuck in there nice, real good, there we go. So this plate will become part of the bed and then 
when I remove the, uh, the bed or put it back on in the future, this bolt will just slide right up through there. It'll hold the bolt in place and then I can tighten or loosen the nut as need be. That's the theory anyhow. We're gonna get the welder hooked up here and see if this is actually gonna work. Alrighty folks, so that is just about going to wrap it up for this video. I got finished up getting all this stuff put together late on the day that I was working on it. So I'll show you here uh, what we got in there and what it looks like. Now as you look at this, you got to keep in mind that while I can kind of weld, uh, I know some welding theory, that doesn't mean that I am actually a welder. There's a big difference between can do it and actually being the real deal. Now, if you're looking at it and thinking, you know, it kind of looks like you just put a whole bunch of little tiny weld dots on there and uh, kind of looks strange. There's actually method to the madness there. The idea is that when you're welding uh, sheet metal, there's a couple things you got to do to try and get the welds to come out halfway decent. So if this right here is what we are welding on there, that's our little plate and our bolt goes through the middle there. What can happen is if you try running a bead all the way along through here, because the sheet metal is so thin, it can actually cause it to start warping. Then of course, by the time you get around to the other side, that's all lifted off and you're trying to hammer that back down and it's just, it's not gonna fit well. But if you put a little weld here, then maybe come over here, put another little weld here, another one over in this corner around here, and then come back around, and kind of keep on working your way around like this, it evenly gets stuff welded down. It's not putting a huge amount of heat in any one spot. And then uh, you should keep that metal from wanting to warp by overheating it. Now, another reason for this is that, again, if you tried running a, a bead of weld all the way along one side, you're putting a huge amount of heat into there without letting it cool down which can cause your weld to blow through. Now, I'll show you on the one that is in the middle here that I already said was kind of rusty. I did have one spot that blew through there and I didn't try going back and fixing it. Uh, I think it's gonna be fine, but again, uh, when you're welding real thin metal, if you try putting all that heat and just continuing all along one side here and putting this weld all the way like that, it's getting really hot and it's just not able to hold together the way that it needs to. So uh, again, this is another way by putting all these little dots around here and just working your way around you just put a little bit of heat in there for a short amount of time and then you're moving on to a different spot and then by the time you come back around to this general area it's had time to cool down and the likelihood of you punching holes through with your welder is going to be greatly reduced so those are the reasons why it looks the way that it does why it looks bad is just because i'm not a good welder and why it's all kind of dotty all the way around there is because of it being such thin metal that you wanna kinda do it in that way to uh, prevent warpage and to prevent blowing through it. So future stuff to get done on this, we already kinda went over that, but I do have some parts on the way for doing some of these other things that need fixing on here. So hopefully in the next week or two, I'll be doing some more work on that. I also have, I think, a couple other videos that I've been working on, so we might drop some of those in between doing work on the truck, uh, depending on how smoothly this goes. And if it goes really bad, we might have a, a week where we just have to skip because nothing's ready, but hopefully we won't have to do that. So I think that is going to be it for this week's video. As always, I appreciate you guys watching, and I will see you next time.